A new milestone in the world of myopia management has been made just last week on January 11th, 2021. The risks and impact of myopia have become a hot topic for at least the last 10 years and more and more eye doctors are beginning to take note to help end myopia. In this video, I'll walk you through the importance of this document hot off the press and this is not just for eye doctors to read but also for parents like yourselves. Hey YouTube, my name is Dr. Natalie Chai. This channel brings you the latest science-based education and treatments in dry eye disease, myopia management, and specialty contact lenses to help you understand why it should matter to you for optimal eye health, function, comfort, and even beauty. Even though this guideline is directed for eye care practitioners, I strongly believe that you should also know what the latest recommendations are. Let me first explain how important this guideline is and why I decided to chat about this for a YouTube video. For years, we had a pool of information from research around the world, which eventually turned into an ocean of studies, findings, new technologies, and theories. All of this is fantastic. However, there was never a clear-cut algorithm on how to apply what we've learned into a real-world clinical setting. At all the conferences that I've attended over the years for myopia management, I've taken bits and pieces of clinical pearls from seasoned veterans in the field and combined it into my own system that made sense for my patients. However, it was quite the process, painful at times, to think to figure out, to write out, and also to test in the market space and repeat. There were many times I had wished for more guidance and thought to myself, hey, wouldn't it be nice if there was a manual for all of this? Well, here it is. On January 11th, 2021, Johnson & Johnson Vision unveiled and made available their new guidance to assess, monitor, and treat myopia in children. After taking the time to read through it myself, I think they did a fantastic job in compiling the mountains of information into a concise and practical starting point for those desiring to get involved in this fight. This document is totally legit, as it was a year-long collaboration between individual leaders as well as renowned organizations including the American Optometric Association, the American Academy of Optometry, the, and all of the Association of Schools and Colleges of Optometry throughout uh, US, Canada, and even Singapore. This document is made publicly available and I have attached the link below. If you're like me, most of the time, I am not overly excited to read a paper, but I must say they did a great job. There's a good balance of research content together with summarization charts, tables, and a tasteful splash of color to drive the point home in only 12 pages. Let's go through it together and I'll share the key points of each page. I'm just going to walk you through actually the document for myopia management guideline from Johnson & Johnson. Here it is. This is the first page, the title page I should say. And um, well, I just can't get over how cute these kids are <laughs> that they've chosen, um, especially the boy, maybe because I'm Asian, I don't know. But anyhow, you know, the usage of color coordination is quite clever. Um, as you can see, you know, myopia and underneath it, it is a growing epidemic and of course managing it. We are now looking into the clinical response to managing myopia. So that's the title page. Here is page number two. Now page number two, the authors made an important point that it is really only guidance. The other thing that they're talking about as well is that science is always changing, meaning that as things and as science re reveals to prove and sometimes disprove certain things, this actual document will be reviewed and updated. Uh, this is an awesome first page as it clearly outlines the definition of myopia. It also gives a nice uh, low down on the growing global epidemic and that now we know that hey any amount of myopia even a 0.25 is considered actually not safe and poses as a risk factor and that we are now hoping and to equip eye doctors across the world to identify our role as eye care practitioners to help with the fight 
Page number three. Okay, so page three. So this page discusses the associated risk of myopia. Myself, along with other optometrists, have chatted about these risks before and how even a minor amount of myopia can increase your child's risk. Things like, you know, myopic macular degeneration, staphylomas, you know, retinal detachments you've heard a lot about. Um, primary open angle glaucoma and even cataracts. So when I look at this chart, I automatically, of course, um, think about myself. Um, you know, for me, I am a minus seven prescription around there, so I find myself in this column. My risk factor when I reach about the age of 60 years old for, let's say, myopic macular degeneration is 846 times more greater more likely to develop that when i reach the age of 60. so again that is pretty concerning for me let's carry on here and page number three or sorry four i should say so myopia is the biggest threat to eye health of the 21st century that's a pretty bold claim and it's a very true claim so this page drives home that particular point in very nice simple infographic style it provides a great summary to the statistic of the last 20 years regarding the increased prevalence in all parts of the world with evidence supporting those claims let's move on to page number five Okay, so more tables help us visualize myopia in a different light because as it says here, myopia is a continuum, right? So myopia is a continuum of disease stages and table two here helps classify myopia. So classifying is super important. Uh, classifies myopia into emetropia or in other words, perfect vision. Uh, not requiring any form of correction or glasses and of course there is then myopia and last but not least high myopia so emetropia is anywhere between a prescription of 0 plus 0 0.75 to minus 0.49 and myopia is between minus 0.5 to a minus 4.99 or minus 5 and high myopia is minus five and above. Table three can be a little confusing. So cycloplegic spherical equivalent autorefraction threshold. So let's kind of unpack that a little bit further. Cycloplegia refers to a technique eye doctors use to measure a person's complete and true prescription by temporarily relaxing the eye muscles responsible for focus. Now, if you ever had your own eyes dial in before, you know it causes blurriness, especially at near and with increased light sensitivity. Cyclopentylate drops do the same thing, but are stronger to ensure complete relaxation of the muscles. So the term spherical equivalent means that the prescription is an estimate combining the value of an eye being either nearsighted or farsighted together with any amount of astigmatism. It's not the exact power of the eye, but it provides a consistent value for when we are comparing to age normals. Let's look at an example. So let's say, you know, your, your child is six. If we're finding that their prescription is less than plus 0 0.75, meaning that hey maybe their prescription is either plus 0 0.5 or maybe even a plus 0 0.25 or even zero that means your child will most likely be nearsighted by age 13 or by grade 8. now with an older child right let's say let's go to the opposite side of the spectrum at 11. so if at age 11 there's their spherical equivalent refraction after a cycloplegic is zero or any small amount of nearsightedness or myopia at let's say minus 0 0.25, minus 0 0.5, or even minus 0.75 in two years time. So that means when they're age 13, they will again most likely enter the realm of myopia. So this provides a good threshold for uh, clinicians to follow. So you may uh, find yourself having to read or stay on this page for a little longer to understand what this means, but it actually makes a lot of sense when you unpack it. Let's continue. So let's go to page number six. So deciding when and how to treat myopia. So this page provides a really good breakdown of the other risk factors to help us predict a child's onset and even their rate of progression. So the more risk factors a child has, the sooner we must act in using strategies to manage. For me, 
I start the conversation of lifestyle changes with either mom or dad or both of them if they're there at the child's first eye exam or when I'm seeing them for the first time. So I try and keep things simple for myself and you know my philosophy is to basically start as early as possible. Okay so page seven. So this page gives great practical advice on what the eye care professional can use for evaluating pre-myopia and myopia. So this gives the pros and cons of, for example, the first one here is refractive error. The pros and cons of using that, uh, pros and cons of using axial length. And I've shared that with you guys before that at the beginning, I didn't have an optical biometer to monitor, but um, that shouldn't be a barrier at all to have you start managing myopia for your patients. So you already have the tools in standard everyday practice and, and you know, it's better than doing nothing is what I always say. The nice thing about this last point here is there's key points for monitoring for whatever uh, method you choose to monitor. Uh, there's just principles that you've got to follow. And let's move on to uh, page number eight. So monitoring and efficacy. So this is gold. Um, I've personally been waiting for a table like this with all the research and values organized into one table. So the ultimate question clinicians and parents will ask when starting a treatment strategy is, how do we know if what we're doing is working? Although it is not an exact science, this provides great benchmarks for Asian you know, versus non-Asian because there is a difference when we're talking about demographics. Growth expectations are different between the two demographics. And moving right along, as you can see with page number nine, this provides the clinician more guidance on follow-up schedule for your child. So myopia management is not your routine exam. <laughs> so it is a long-term program your child will be plugged into for the purpose of reducing the elongation of your child's eye. So that simply means we'll be seeing your child more than the routine once or maybe twice per year. The follow-up schedule for your child may reflect a similar pattern to the sample here on the right hand side. It may be very close to it. At best, this is ballpark. So please don't be surprised if your eye doctor provides your child and you a total different follow-up schedule because everything is customized for your child and your goals. Moving right along, here is page number 10. So this is a great overview of the strategies available for eye care professionals to use in myopia management. It is personalized for your child and the option used is very fluid. And what I mean by that is that you might start with one route, but as your child grows, so they might choose, hey, a soft multi multifocal contact lens um, from starting from a myopia co uh, control spectacle or even orthokeratology. And so it, you might have to move to another strategy or sometimes you might need to combine strategies if your child is not responding as expected. And here is, of course, page 11. And this is a great one pager summarizing practical guidelines for the eye care professional. Here, as you can see, it talks about the comprehensive eye examination, what your eye doctor should already be doing. And on the you know, right hand side here, myopia control consultation, because it might not be for everybody. At the very least, a consultation is an educational meeting one on one with your eye doctor. It doesn't mean you have to move forward with it. We're just trying to educate you on, hey, this is available for you, for your child, and it's always going to be available for you and your child, of course, up until around the age of 18, 19. That is the last page here. So it's a really nice small uh, document here that is relatively easy to understand. That's the guideline in a nutshell. I would strongly encourage you to sit down and read through the reference. The language used is also quite patient friendly where most parents should have no problem understanding the premise of this document. We are certainly lucky to live in an era with so much information, but most importantly, we have people who care enough to do the head work for us, compile it together with today's most relevant research with clinical application. Well, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoy learning about everything dry eye disease, myopia management, and specialty contact lenses, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to make sure you don't miss my new video every second Thursdays. Take care of your eyes and we'll see you next time.